There's the whole run. Alright, now this motherfucker's welded on here. So we might have to just tackle this head. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Hunter Tuned. Uh, t Teammate, shut the fuck up. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so today we have been working on the Integra. Last night I worked on the Integra and we got the car fixed. Uh, I didn't really film the process. I ended up live streaming it last night and figuring out what the issue was because one of the subscribers that uh, is subscribed to the channel actually Facebook messaged me and he was like, hey dude, um, I've had that same exact clacking noise and it was the VTEC <laughs> solenoid. So um, I pulled the VTEC solenoid off and I put a new one on and this thing runs like butter. It doesn't have any idle issues anymore. It doesn't have um, pretty much anything wrong with clacking nothing. <laughs> <It's blunt. laughs> you guys are fucking with me. <laughs> I'm talking to the people. Yeah, man. we're over here like... So anyways, this problem makes complete sense. I tore everything apart being me, being myself, I think way too far into stuff sometimes and I was like okay noise coming from cylinder head has to be like a hard part like a camshaft or a rocker arm or a valve or a valve spring or piston slap or fucking rod knock or something like that. And I tore everything apart and everything looked fine. Everything looked uh, you know normal and how it should. So that's why I've been stressing about this so much is because I've literally looked at everything. And for it to be something as simple as a VTEC solenoid completely blows my mind. Um, but it makes sense, and let me tell you why it makes sense. When the VTEC, okay, so the solenoid I think was stuck open. Shut the fuck up, t -Bag. He is making fun of me. I'm just trying to explain to the people. It's okay, I'm just trying to work over here. Okay, all right, keep going. I'll get to you, Christian. Okay, so anyways, the old solenoid that was on the car was stuck open from my knowledge, which means that the oil pressure is going to lock the VTEC pin if the solenoid is open. Um, and it would not do it when it was warmed up because the oil pressure would be low enough not to be able to actually engage the VTEC pin, if that makes sense. And when I would rev it up, it would be like engage, disengage, engage, disengage, and that's why I would kind of stutter at like 1200 RPM because the VTEC lock pin was like coming in and out. You know, it was trying to engage, trying to not engage, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, like I said, brand new VTEC solenoid that actually functions and works, and the car is in non VTEC while it's idling, and then it'll only hit VTEC when it's at like 5,000, so that clacking and shit won't happen anymore. And I mean, literally, guys, this thing runs like to a totally new car. It, it actually tunes. I can get it to tune because before I would try to tune the car and it would be like all like heebie jeebie. Like it would just, it would. It, it wouldn't be consistent kind of thing. I couldn't get it to idle steady. I couldn't get it to do anything. And this all makes freaking sense. It all makes sense now, which is crazy because, like I said, a VTEC solenoid, who would have thought? I've never seen one go bad personally. Um, and I actually have been talking to Brent from PFI and I can't thank Brent enough for all the uh, you know help and support that he's given on the uh, build here because I've been asking him about you know just random shit i've been digging in with the car and he's given me a lot of pointers and whatever and this guy's you know he's been in the game for like 20 plus years um you know in the honda game and he's he was even kind of dumbfounded by it and he was like dude a vtex solenoid wow that that's crazy dude so anyways um car's running good now like i said it still has a little bit of like a um like a popping like a misfire kind of thing because it's open downpipe and it, I don't know, let me just start it quick. See, it's got that little pop. And 
tune-up is like pretty spot on. I mean, it's right at 14, 14.5. I've tried punching fuel in it, punching fuel out of it, and pulling ignition in and out of it on the tune. So like right now, the car has like 15 degrees or whatever at, you know, um, idle. And if I take ignition out of it, say only run five degrees of ignition timing, the popping and whatever, it, it simmers down. If I put 25 degrees in it, the popping and sputtering gets worse. So I'm thinking it's just because the spark plugs are gapped really small because this setup is going to be making a lot of power and it's open down pipe as well as these spark plug wires are pretty old and shitty. Like they're kind of cracked up a little bit. And I also got a little bit of oil in the spark plug uh, holes because when we were messing with the, um, you know, trying to find the clack, I ran it with the valve cover off and a lot of oil actually got down into the spark plug holes. So um, I'm thinking maybe some oil residue or something is on the spark plug wires and that's kind of why it's, you know, doing the little poppy dance. But like I said, other than that, we got a lot of stuff done on the car. We put, you know, the valve cover, everything is back on. New VTEC solenoid, set the base timing already with the Honda. shot it with timing light, uh, made sure it was at 16 degrees, matched the Honda. Um, we also got the boost solenoid for the Honda, for the boost by gear. We got this wired in. Um, this is just a four port Honda at a boost control solenoid and it has twin wastegates. So the way we plumbed this is pretty much just by following the uh, diagram here. This has, um, like when you buy the four port Honda at a boost solenoid, it shows you a diagram of how to hook it up. And I've done this on previous videos with my EK with the B20 VTEC turbo that car that's sitting out there. Um, I, I did this install on that, um, so I do have videos on this already, but I'm gonna cover, go over it again, kind of, you know, just basic overview. And pretty much you want the nipple off the turbo, so like this car has um, a eighth inch pipe thread uh, nipple off of the turbo, which I just ran a vacuum line off of that, and that uh, vacuum line off the turbo goes into the uh, intake of the boost control solenoid. The solenoid is labeled, it has intake, exhaust, A and B. So the intake is gonna come off the turbo, go into the intake uh, on the solenoid. The exhaust, it comes with a little vent. Um, it's like a little screen thing that you just kind of plug into the uh, solenoid. And then you're gonna have uh, A and B outputs on the solenoid. So A is going to go to the top of the wastegate and B is going to go to the bottom. Now, this car having twin wastegates, it's a little bit trickier because you have to control two wastegates and not just one. So what I did is I ran the A, which is the top port. So I ran one vacuum line off of the A port on the solenoid to a T, and then the T would go to the tops of the wastegates. And then same with B, which is for the bottom. I run one line off of solenoid B, and that would come down to a T and T into both of the wastegates. So that is all set up and uh, going good. Bottle fed, baby. What's that? That is uh, some good old uh, nitrous. And there we're gonna open it up and uh, ratchet strap it to a chair. <laughs> right, like farm truck and <laughs> yeah. engine. Oh my god, that video was actually quite funny. Right. Oh. Okay, so anyways guys, I uh, just kind of wanted to go over some of this stuff with you guys and let you know that the car is running great again. Um, and we got the boost solenoid plumbed up. Uh, I still have to wire it. The other end of the you know whole boost by gear thing here is once it's all plumbed with the vacuum lines, you have to run the wiring into the car. So I have one of the wires going into the cab of the car and I'm going to run that to, I forget what it is, A10 or A12 or something like that. Um, in the Honda or into the OBD1 ECU. And then the other end of the solenoid just goes to 12 volt power. So you can run this to constant switched. It doesn't really matter as long as it's on when you are, you know, driving the car and wanting the boost by gear to actually work. So I still have to run this to a power source. And then the other one, I still have to run to a 10 or 12 or whatever it is. Um, I don't remember off the top of my head, but it says it on the Honda, like on the S300 under the boost control um, table or whatever, it says um, what pin to use, and I'm pretty sure it's A10. That's just what I'm thinking of off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, other than that, car's doing good. Um, 
yeah I'm trying to make sure it doesn't have any oil leaks which I don't think it does um, may swap out the spark plug wires all that kind of stuff and these are the uh, 1300 cc injectors that I had in the Civic they're a decapped Camaro injector which they're out of like the newer style Camaros so they're not really easy to find otherwise I would sell them on the website just like I do with the you know normal style truck injectors and the normal flex style injectors um, but these ones flow just a little bit more like I said the flex style flows about a thousand these ones are about 12 to 1300 when decapped and they work really good I really enjoy these but I'm just using them in here for testing purposes I had them in here just because I knew they worked float them all that kind of shit when we were having all these you know problems with the car and it misfiring and shit so but this car does have a set of Bosch 2200s these are the Bosch 210s that like slop and mechanics uses and a bunch of other guys um, and I did verify these these are legit Bosch 2200s so we're gonna be throwing these back in um, one of these days and getting the car on a lot of fuel setup so we can crank the boost you know pretty high this guy wants to make a lot of power we didn't build a css block with forged pistons and rods for nothing so um but anyways for now i have to run and um chip the ecu for the boost by gear components and i will go over that stuff in a minute um i just got the uh parts from xenocron.com make sure to go hit these guys up for all your chipping needs um they are you know best in the business in my opinion for you know ecu parts hardware all that kind of stuff because They've been doing it, you know, pretty much since the beginning, and, you know, they've been around pretty pretty long in the Honda community, and I respect Chris Harris uh, without a doubt. He's uh, he's an OG, as uh, one of these guys on the Christian's live stream yeah, yeah. said. Um, it's funny, we actually got seven people watching on Christian's live stream right now. Yeah. You guys should say hi to the old Hunter Tuned. But anyways, uh, Christian's actually been live streaming on his channel if you guys haven't checked it out uh, we kind of just are doing random random nights with hunter tune kind of thing on christian's channel so if you guys haven't subscribed to him make sure to go subscribe to christian blake on youtube um like i said you know we kind of just been throwing it out there and the five six people that are on there kind of get to hang out with us we got eight people on there now yeah so yeah anyways you guys should go check it out sometime we live stream on there or we have been live streaming on there more often so if it's not live streaming on hunter tuned we might be live streaming on the christian blake channel yeah so oh, yeah uh, we got some hellos we got some hellos yeah. ragged edge racing lightning auto works hi joy and murky and murky says hi mom <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to get these Boost by Gear components uh, installed and kind of show you the overview of doing this. Okay guys, so we ended up having to skip over the ECU step of the Boost by Gear install because the ECU actually already had all the Boost by Gear components installed into it. So that is actually um, another thing I can cross off the list because um, I, did, I was unaware that the ECU already had the Boost by Gear components installed. So since that's done, um, we can kind of move on with the car. And <clears throat> I just need to run a vacuum line from the intake to the blow off valve. And I need to do an oil change and a few other small things. And once all that is done, then I can, um, you know, tune it and actually make some boost. the fuck do you do teabag teabag tried putting this big ass filter this is like way too big and then he tried putting tape around this so it would space it out like get this shit off of here guy no not gonna work yeah there's no way that'll fit it's too big okay anyways um I have been taking a break from the car because I don't have any uh, vacuum line adapters or anything here to adapt the big nipple off of the intake to the blow off valve. Don't have anything here so I kind of wanted to just get some other stuff done while I could. So, <coughs> um, so I actually uh, bought this MPC or MPS. Uh, this is a tether kill switch for my Hayabusa. 
and I actually bought it from my buddy that we dynoed his turbo Hayabusa on the channel a couple months back. Um, he's actually parting his bike out, so I'm buying a bunch of stuff from him for my Hayabusa. Um, and the first thing I picked up was the tether switch because the tether is required when you go a certain amount of speed at the track I'm at, you need a tether kill switch. So what that does is pretty much, you know, it'll plug right into here and you know, it'll plug into the end of the tether here. And then if you, you know, happen to fall off of the bike or whatever, it kills all uh, engine power and cuts the fuel pump and ignition and all that stuff. So the bike doesn't like, you know, start on fire or whatever. So um, I got that kill switch wired in. This is, like I said, this is the MPS tether for, I, I think they're universal. It just, you know, has a bar end thing. You know, this will just kind of sit on the end of the handlebar, you know, and bolt on there. But this is a 2005 Hayabusa and this is just the wiring harness that comes off of like the kill switch here. And the orange with black stripe wire is the one that you wire this in line with. So you just cut the orange with black stripe wire, cut it right in half, strip both ends, and then wire one wire to one side and one wire to the other. And then I have a functioning kill switch. So I got that all done. I tested it already, everything is working. So I'm just gonna have to button this up. Probably just gonna run some electrical tape over these wires and then uh, bolt this onto the handlebar for good. Get my, uh, you know, my kill switch starter box thing here. Get this all situated. Set my throttle slack because this is a little sticky. Um, gonna do some of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, anyways, I uh, wanted to touch base quick before I end the video. Um, a subscriber actually reached out to me on the live stream or the last video I posted. And he's like, hey man, I got a 2009 KLR 650, which is like a big adventure bike, like a, you know, an enduro, you know, touring adventure type of bike, um, old man grandpa dirt bike kind of thing. And he's like, hey man, I crashed my KLR 650. I'm not, you know, in any shape or, you know, I don't really have the time or motivation to actually fix the bike up. If you're interested, hit me up. And I'm like, honestly, dude, I don't have any room for toys. I don't really have the money for it. And um, it just probably isn't a good idea for me. So he reached out to me via email, got a hold of him, got phone number and address. And he's like, dude, just come check out the bike. We can talk price when you get here. So I went and checked this bike out. And it's like, I, like he said, it's a 2009 Kawasaki KLR 650. And it has some motor work done to it. He had like the motor dyno tuned, the carburetor rejetted, um, you know, a bunch of like internal engine work done to it. And it made like 50 horsepower on the dyno and you know, everything sounded real good. But he's like, I crashed it. So he's like, whatever, come look at it. Went and looked at it and I ended up buying the bike. So this is my 2009 Kawasaki KLR650. Um, I've kind of always wanted one of these bikes just to try it out because I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos of guys literally taking these things. Like there's one guy on YouTube with a video is called Get Lost and it's a guy that rides from New Jersey to Panama on one of these. So I don't know, like I said, it's an adventure bike. It's meant to get out there and take on any terrain and get you where you need to be. But unfortunately, this guy did a bunch of engine work and uh, he was getting a little hot on the throttle on the highway. And, you know, the wind or, you know, there, he was, said he was by a semi or something like that. And the wind kind of got under the bike and it flipped him right over the bars and the bike, you know, took a tumble. The bike definitely took uh, the brunt of the abuse. Uh, the guy is still here talking about it. He's a little banged up, but he will make a full recovery. I'm, I'm super glad to hear that he came out of this and whatnot. I actually had a buddy of mine die. <laughs> he passed away when I was like 17 or 18 years old and he had a WR250 Enduro. He was going like 35 miles an hour. And you know, if you land wrong, anything like that, anything can happen on bikes. You got to really respect them and you got to really, uh, you know, kind of, you just kind of got to, you got to have a, a respect for it. And you got to know, you know, this thing's like a bull. It can whip me off at any time. 
any moron can pull in front of me, all that kind of stuff. Um, I really enjoy motorcycles, but I mean, a lot of you guys, you know, you kind of been hating a little bit on the bike stuff, but you know, it is what it is. I'm here doing what I want and doing what I love and doing what I enjoy and doing what makes me happy. And I feel like that's all that matters. And I bought this bike because the guy really likes the YouTube channel that I'm doing here. And I'm trying to kind of bring this thing back to life and try to make it, you know, how it should be. So I want to get a new headlight basket. This thing right here, kind of all banged up, beat up. Uh, the gauge cluster works still, but you know, the lenses are cracked. So I might have to replace the lenses or something like that. You know, the front fender might be reusable, it might not be. The forks are a little bit tweaked, they're a little bit bent, and the handlebars are completely fucked. I may have a guy that has a fork jig that we can straighten the forks that are on it, and I'll just get a new set of bars for it. Um, other than that, the bike has a lot of good stuff. It's got a FMF Powerbomb exhaust, full system, all the way back, Corbin seat, like super big gas tank like enduro you know style gas tank and uh yeah dude like i said the motors was freshly rebuilt and this thing is freaking sweet i really like the bike um and i can't wait to see what this thing looks like once hunter tune gets a hold of it and can kind of get it back going how it should be so with that being said guys i'm going to end the video off uh hopefully you enjoyed the update on the integra and enjoyed that i got it fixed I'm super happy that I got it fixed and everything is working. Um, more to come on the Hayabusa. Like I said, um, I wanted to start doing bike stuff on the channel when I can and hopefully you guys enjoy it and, and you know, you like it. Um, if not, just kind of bear through it and see, you know, if you can stick through it till we get to more Honda stuff or more Chevy LS stuff. But uh, anyways, yeah, so the Busa, I'm going to be getting a new seat for it. It's actually a drag seat where it has like a hump right on the seat so your butt can kind of plant right into the seat rather than the seat where it's flat um, they're not as comfortable and they're not as good for like drag racing and stuff so i might be getting a new seat i'm also going to be getting a shinko um it's like a drag radial for a motorcycle for a tire because this thing i mean literally you punch it at 30 miles an hour going down the road and it spins it literally spins a tire so um it definitely needs a little bit better uh rubber on it to hook up i might gear it down a little bit and get it dyno tuned i've been trying to get a hold of jason farrell over at farrell performance to try to get this thing on the dyno but he's been extremely busy um you know with racing season here and everything like that which you know i understand it's it's okay but uh you know i'm really trying to get the hayabusa on the dyno and see what kind of numbers it puts out and see what it can put out with a tune and maybe a little bit of mr12 fuel um, MR12 is a whole nother video we can talk about guys. MR12 is 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 real good stuff uh, We might put some of that in the bike and see what we can come up with for a horsepower number and see what kind of quarter mile times We can turn out with this bike um, I'm really excited to drag race it and actually run a quarter mile um, This bike in the eighth is just getting started <laughs> and the quarter mile is really where this thing is gonna shine so Hopefully we'll get this thing back to the track soon. Obviously I got the tether installed, so you know, won't have any issues passing tech, um, all that. But yeah, like I said, thanks for watching the video guys. I really, uh, you know, appreciate the support and I can't believe we crossed 6,000 subscribers, you know, a few weeks ago and we're steadily growing. And uh, my goal is to maybe hit 10,000 by the end of the year. Kind of a lofty goal, maybe not. 10,000 was my number like, in springtime and then i kind of took a break from youtube and started uploading like less often so maybe that's fucking with it but i don't know anyways thanks for watching guys uh i'll get back with you later and we'll do some updates tomorrow on the integra and some other stuff that may be going on i also picked up another bike uh i got a lot of collateral building up right now that hopefully we're going to be making a bunch of money on soon yeah you guys get it uh, thanks for supporting me. Um, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good night.